International Peace Bureau's webinar, Asian Jews Voice for Peace and Justice. My name is Stephanie Villan of the International Peace Bureau and I will be one of your co-moderators today. My co-moderator is Jess Papado, also of the International Peace Bureau. Uh, just before we jump into the content, I will just quickly go through some of the test functions for today. So we do have uh, simultaneous Japanese translation. So in order to use this, quickly let me open up this. So there is um, the interpretation channel down the bottom. If you just click on it and select which language channel you would like to hear, then it will automatically take you onto that one. Um, so we also do have um, a method for interaction today. So if you would like to say something, um, just raise your hand, which goes on the, inter on the reaction button next to the language channel. Um, so we are also not going to live stream today's event, but we are going to record it. Um, so just to keep some of the identities protected of the people that are here today. Um, please keep your mic on mute um, and also keep your camera off if you would not like your face to be shown. Um, and if you have any comments or questions, please post them in the chat throughout the session because we do have tech people with us today who will be monitoring these. Um, we will collect them for um, distribution to the speakers in the Q&A time. Also, if you do have any resources, um, organisations, publications, just great organisations that are relevant to today's content and that you'd like to share, we uh, also encourage you to post these into the chat. Um, and we have people that will collect these and then um, put these into an email that will be sent out after the webinar. Okay, so first of all, I'm just going to hand then straight over to John Q, uh, who is our IPD board member and a senior researcher at the Institute for Reunification and Peace Policy at Hunchin University in South Korea for our opening remarks. So John Q, straight over to you. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, so first of all, I'd like to express my special thanks to uh, Asatori Eko, uh, my co-coordinator for this webinar, uh, and Mark Bata, uh, Mark, Mark Mark has greatly helped us prepare for this webinar, and Hirano Emiko volunteers to translate at this webinar. This webinar notes a meaningful social political phenomenon. Asian youth generation's political activism. In recent years, teenagers, people in their 20s and 30s, also known as uh, the MG generation, have become increasingly involved in civil direct actions aimed at democracy, justice, and peace on streets, scares, and online spaces. This has, been, this has been particularly noticeable during political upheavals throughout East Asia. As you know, for example, Hong Kong, Thailand, and the civil disobedience, disobedience movement against the military coup in Myanmar. In fact, we have witnessed numerous examples of political activism by the, by the younger generation. It was the youth who led candlelight demonstrations in South Korea in 22, 28, and from 2016 to 2017. Additionally, they are also credited for the civil movement, student emergence action for liberal democracy against war bill in Japan, and the umbrella revolution in Hong Kong. However, the recent political activism of young people centered on Generation Z utilizes SNS and digital technology. Since they are the generation most familiar with such digital culture to overcome space-time constraints, they exchange ideas and practice solidarity across borders despite different national socioeconomic conditions and confront common absurdities, such as 
insecurity, unfairness, and inequality. Their views are not limited to a single country. The culture they enjoy may already be transnational. For example, as you know, three finger salute. In this webinar, we pay attention to the means and the culture of the, of the younger generation's political participation. Their critical thinking and peer ties connecting beyond the borders. One of the co-founders of the Declaration of Global Citizen, a network organization led by people in their 20s in South Korea, responded in an interview with a weekly magazine to a request for a word, for a word to politicians of the, of the older generation. Please listen to us. Yes, this webinar is the time to listen to them. Thank you. And uh, next, uh, my colleague Stephanie will show you a video. Although this webinar is not about the Mikuti Alliance, but this webinar, uh, this video contains, includes dynamic civic activism in East Asia in recent years. Please, Stephanie. That was such a great video, and actually the first time I watched it, it reminded me that I still haven't seen Hamilton. Um, okay, so let's move on to our speaking panel that we have today. We have four speakers lined up, and it's actually really amazing how diverse and intersectional um, the speaking panel comes from. So we have Park Ju Hyong, who is the co-representative of the Declaration of the Global Citizen from the Republic of Korea. Park is a Gen Z activist for the Korean Peace Movement, and his efforts have been mostly focused on international solidarity with other youth-led peace movements around the world and in Myanmar and Hong Kong in particular. Then we will have Nekaya Ayumi, who is the Vice President of the Democratic Youth League of Japan. She has been involved in the Young People's Movement, the abolition of nuclear weapons and zero nuclear power. 
Next up, we will have Tim Sander, who is the spokesperson for the General Strike Collaboration Committee and organiser for the Military Alliance. Kim, we know how difficult it was for you to be able to join us today, and so we are very um, grateful that you so kindly and bravely have agreed to be with us here today. We're really looking forward to um, what you have to say. And then we will have Wisalia Nyagama from the Social Human Rights for Publicising Group in Thailand. Uh, Wisalia is a recent graduate of law from the Konkian University in Thailand, um, and she's from fellow students who felt the need to speak up for human rights form this group through which they educate themselves and others on how government forces are being um, oppressive to human rights and they also provide some legal advice for people who need it in this area. Then um, after we have our Q&A time, then we will have Galil. Um, Galil will be Gosman Castillo who will give our closing remarks. So Galil is from the Focus on the Global South organization in the Philippines. Um, and Galil is a program officer for folks um, and is an author, sorry, for many of um, Focus on the Global South publications and entries into the organization's blog. Um, and he has special interest in climate and ecological justice and has a lot of really interesting takes on how this intersects with human rights and conflict. So let's move on to our first speaker. So I will just hand the floor over to Park Gu Hyung. Take it away. Park. Hello, my name is Do Hyung Park, co-representative of City Group called the Declaration of Global Citizen. I'm so happy to have the opportunity to talk with MZ generations, younger generation young people from various Asian countries. Thank you. Sorry, Park, this, uh, I should have been clear. Um, this is your allocated speaking time. So um, now you say your presentation. Did you need me to make you, did you have something that you wanted to share, like a presentation? You want to share the presentation? Uh, start, start presentation right now? Sure. Yes. Hang on, did somebody make you a co-host so you can share your screen? Yes, I think he should be a co-host. Yep, there's some, Julia, can you help me? I can't see him, it's not letting me uh, make him a host for some reason, nothing's just coming up. Perfect, thank you. Nice to meet you. It's such an honor to be in charge on, of one of the presentations. Thank you to the IPP officers for giving us a valuable opportunity. I am a Korean MZ generation activist and activist in the, in the international solidarity section, which is part of the peace movement in Korea. I am also openly queer and a member of the Green Party Korea. So I'm going to talk about the international solidarity movement of the Korean MZ generation. Before I started, I was asked, asked to briefly introduce my activities. So I'm going to introduce some international solidarity activities that I've been doing since 2019. I formed and led two major organizations. The first group is called Speak for Hong Kong in Korea. For, for the first time, as Speak for Hong Kong in Korea, we proposed two actions the silent march and the Lennon wall as a way to embody the voice of solidarity in Hong Kong, which was resonating in Korean universities. There were three reasons why we chose to be silent in the rally. First, memorial to the victims in the course of Hong Kong democratic uprising. Second, to criticize the Korean government, which is sil silent despite serious human rights violations in neighboring countries. Third, solidarity with Hong Kong citizens who have been deprived of freedom of speech. 
In particular, Lenon Wall, which was simple to install, spread to universities across the country. And we gathered people and started marching 300 young people and students in the Seoul. This is a picture of the scene, and this is a, and, and this is a reproduction of the laser rally in Hong Kong. And, and we have since changed our name to the Declaration of Global Citizen in order to condemn human rights violations in all countries. Our first action was to boycott Milan. In fact, there have been many concerns and discussions about the way the boycott behaved. Nevertheless, in order to solidify with Hong Kong, Korean citizens were looking for actions that they could do. And they chose the boycott because it was the only way to gather this voice. Recently, we are uh, and and this is of this is a joint press conference of young politicians and members of young civic group who are solidifying the Thai, Thai democratic uprising and condemning Korean companies exports of war cannons. Our press conferences are rarely held indoors, but this space is called the Namyeongdong public discharge room where the South Korean military locked up and suppressed citizens. It is now named the Democratic Movement Memorial and is a symbol of Korean history of state violence. Recently, we are hosting a rally to denounce Pascal's collusion with Myanmar, Myanmar military junta. I don't know if you've seen this picture, but it's a rally to criticize POSCO for stepping on the ladder of inequality and death to go up and up. The rally became a hot topic in Korea and later became an opportunity for citizens to know the relationship between POSCO and Myanmar's military. Since then, we have made a network organization. It's, it is an organization called Climate Climate Labor Human Rights Action. It's a network of youth organizations that used to do climate justice activities, youth organizations that used to struggle for labor, and youth organizations that used to international solidarity movement. We are holding street demonstrations in front of POSCO Center named Citizen Speaking Party, which is held every Wednesday. Now let me introduce the it's the International Solidarity Movement of the Korean MZ Generation. The student-led social movement in Korea faded away completely in the, 20, the 2010s. And in the 2020s, however, domestic youth movements began to rise up again. International Solidarity became a pillar of the Korean youth movement in 2019, when universities across the country shouted for solidarity with Hong Kong. This led to the youth movement's focus in the agenda of Asian democracy. This, uh, the, the experience of South Korea's MZ generation solidarity with the Hong Kong democratic uprising led to a move to solidarity with the Thai democratic uprising, as it became known that the water cannons, water cannons used in the Thai democratic uprising were made in Korea. Domestic youth activities began to hold Korean companies and government responsible. This was also possible due to history of Korean civil society's struggle to implement sanctions against companies. The Korean civil society has focused on the agenda of Asian democracy since the 1990s and has actively operated networks such as the Korean Trans Transnational Corporations Watch, which monitors human rights violations committed by Korean companies abroad. As student activists fighting against capitalism incorporated into the movement for international solidarity, International activists, activists became involved in the, in the struggle against companies. Currently, there is an ongoing struggle against POSCO, which is the source of funds for Myanmar's military junta. POSCO has one of the highest industrial accident rates in Korea and emits the most amount of CO2. Climate crisis 
exploit, exploitation of labor and con collusion with coup forces in Myanmar all stem from structural problems in Korea. Korean MZ generation activists are trying to say these are not different stories and they are all stories that point to the contradiction of capitalism. Thank you. Thank you, Park. Park, can we take down the screen? Perfect, cool. Okay. Um, thanks, Park. I particularly think it's really, really, really great actually that the youth are calling out the big corporations like POSCO that are supporting the regime um, for these little guys to come up against um, these huge corporations. It's really massive, but also really like a great achievement um, that more people need to do. And if more of us get behind it, then it's only going to grow. So very much uh, well done there. So we'll move on now to our next speaker, which is Nakayama Sorry, I practiced rehearsing this before. Um, Nikayama Ayumi, Vice President of the Democratic Youth League of Japan. Uh, Ayumi, the floor is yours. I am Nakayama Ayumi, Vice President of the Democratic Youth League of Japan. Through democracy protests in Hong Kong, anti government protests in Thailand, Civil disobedience movement against military coup in Myanmar have drawn much attention from the youth in Japan. Many young people feel that outrageous oppression by the government is wrong and support their contemporaries in these countries raising their voices against such oppression. The Democratic Youth League of Japan hopes to work in solidarity with you or to achieve a peaceful and just Asia. You may see Japan as a country where massive demonstrations are less likely to happen compared to other countries and changes in the youth may not be visible. However, drastic changes are taking place among the youth in Japan. This is what I want to share with you today. Our organization was born in 1923 and has a 98 year history. Currently, we have 9,500 members between 15 to 30 years old. With the original name, Communist Youth League, the organization was founded on the eve of the Second World War. And during the war, the League waged, waged courageous struggles in defiance of the military government oppression, upholding the opposition to Japan's war of aggression and the people's sovereignty. When the war ended, the League adopted the current name and has carried out a variety of activities to meet the ardent needs of the young people for the improvement of people's lives, peace, independence, democracy, and social progress. Another mission of the League is to learn Marx and Gauss so scientific socialism. From the point of view of those of us who have studied scientific socialism with the young youth for many years, we feel that socialism is now gaining attention in Japan, especially among the youth. We are not yet in a situation where the majority of young people want socialism. However, there is a growing attention to socialism with major bookstores setting up special, special sections for books on socialism, and more and more young people are straightforwardly sympathetic to socialist theory. Behind this phenomenon, we witness changes taking place among the youth during the last years. Let me talk about these changes. First, the corona pandemic has made life difficult for many young people, and they are beginning to feel the limits of capitalism. The Democratic Youth League of Japan is working on food aid for university students all over the country. Over the past year, more than 60,000 students have benefit, benefited from the free food and household items distributed to them. Students have told us that they eat only once a day or they just go to bed to ease their hunger. 
And some organizers have told us that some students could not keep standing in line due to hunger. And others say that they've, uh, that other students are using the service since last summer are apparently losing weight. In Japan, a supposedly developed country, students were queuing up to receive food. This situation greatly shocked other generations. The pandemic revealed the serious poverty of students, which was so little known before. One of the reasons why students are impoverished to this extent is the cost of education in Japan, which is abnormally high, even by global standards. Many students had to work part-time to pay for their studies and living expenses as their parents cannot afford, afford, it, afford them. But they lost their part-time income due to the pandemic and have suddenly become destitute. On the other hand, a small number of wealthy people have increased their assets. In Japan, billionaires with assets of more than 1 billion US dollars have doubled their wealth in the year of the corona crisis. Disparity in wealth and poverty are spreading at an accelerating rate, driving many people into poverty. Now, the increasing inequality and poverty in the wake of the pandemic is freeing young people from the spell of self-responsibility. They begin to realize that they are not the only ones struggling financially and that they should not be to be blamed for lack of effort. Realizing this, young people have come to think what is wrong is the system of our society itself. Secondly, there is a growing sympathy among young people for changing the politics. The league delivers the voices of students. It has gathered through food aid and interviews with young workers to the government, local authorities and opposition parties who are working together with us in joint struggles between citizens and opposition parties. Our membership is growing with the youth who want take action together. Volunteers are pouring in, in all over the country to help with our food re relief activities is another sign of this. For a long time in Japan, young people have been said to be indifferent to politics. In the ideological strategy of the ruling class using the mainstream media, they have fallen into believing the neoliberal self-responsibility theory and unable to connect their demands with politics. But the corona pandemic made this a thing of the past. Now that university students are still barred from campus to enjoy normal student lives, that Japan lags far behind other countries in the fight with the pandemic and that no real financial measures are taken to support the population, everyone knows that the government should be to blame for the current situation. In this way, young people have come closer to politics. They watch parliamentary debate, voice, res voice their opinions on the corona virus and other issues, and are taking actions to bring changes to the politics. As a result of their efforts, a special allowance for students affected by COVID-19 was established. Also, a proposed bill to amend the Public Prosecutor's Office Act was aborted which highlighted the misappropriation of politics by current government. And the President Mori Yoshiro of the Organizing Committee of Tokyo Olympics, who made discriminatory remarks against women, was forced to resign. All of them are achievement of young people's voice and actions. Youth are changing, uh, but uh, they are not still the majority. This is because the vision to change society is not yet shared by many of them. I'm sure the number of young people who will stand up will drastically increase once they receive a message of prospect. We in the Democratic Youth League of Japan have a clear vision for social change. The corona crisis has revealed the abnormality of the Liberal Democratic Party's politics which has continued since the end of the war, always favoring big businesses and following the commands of the United States. Changing the ruling Liberal Democratic Party's politics is the only way for young people to live in peace. At the same time, we have the prospect of overcoming capitalism. This is the vision of socialist society, but the vision of socialism that we have may not be the one that you have in mind. 
the characteristics of the socialist society can be summed up in one word, a society in which the free and full development of humans is possible. We believe that such a society will be realized by inheriting the variable products that mankind has acquired in capitalist society. Here, here are some voices of students who have learned firsthand about how communicating this vision that society can, can and does change and empower youth. One student said, in the 19 years I have lived, I thought that the world of politics was isolated, something like existing in textbook. But hearing the society is changing and it can be changed, I felt hope that there might be something I can do. Another student said, I strongly feel the hope of socialism and communism. How happy I would be if I could experience a future society where we only have to work necessary working hours so that each person can have more free time to develop his or her own ability and potential. This will lead to the development of society itself. So we, Democratic League of Japan, will continue to provide food aid to students and carry out other activities to help young people with their difficulties while conveying this vision of society can and does change through both learning and campaigning in this way that changes among the youth will grow more powerful and sustained, leading to a real change in politics. The Japanese government domestically is refusing to protect people's lives and health from the corona crisis. Overseas, it just helps to aggravate military tensions in Asia. It has not taken a drastic taken a decisive position based on reason to deal with the situation in Hong Kong and Myanmar. Achieving political change in Japan will lead to achieving a peaceful, just Asia. In solidarity with uh, our friends and colleagues in Asia, we will continue to do our best to make a difference in our society. Thank you so much, Ayumi, and you are absolutely making a difference and we are all over the world just really amazed at um, the courage and also like just how well you're all able to organize and come together and uh, have the impact that you are having. Please continue because you, we just cannot give up this fight. Um, so I'm going to now hand over to my co-moderator um, for the second half of the event. Uh, Jessica, Jessica, you're now on. Thank you very much, Stephanie. And yeah, moving on to our presentations. Now it's time to go to Myanmar. And now I would like to introduce our third speaker, Kim Sandar. She's the spokesperson of the General Strike Collaboration Committee and organizer for the New York Tea Alliance. Please, Kim, the floor is yours. Um, hello. Uh, is my voice clear enough? Uh, first, I would like to ask. Yes, it's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for giving me floor and thank you for this opportunity to talk about what is happening in Myanmar and how Generation Z and Myanmar are facing in some of these injustices. So uh, before my presentation, I've been asked to introduce myself. So uh, before the coup February of this year, I was a civic educator and activist. And my activism starts since from 2014 when one of the journalists being killed by military groups. Uh, and uh, and we we raised the voice for that, and we organized the the march for that. And uh, since then, I involved in the activism and aware of uh, some social issue and political issue in the country. 
uh, related to peace and justice, like uh, Myanmar has the longest civil war in, in the world and we have to solve that problem. And other like um, military involving in politics uh, and business and other things, they are extending their power in uh, that is the huge uh, effect on every one of the citizens. And so that we highlighted like as an activist and we highlighted the role of it uh, and danger of shrinking civil, civil space in the last years ago. Um, so for that, uh, we, we organized a public peace march in 2018. And for that, I've been charged and uh, charge and have uh, sent to the court to two years. So I have to attend the court two years every fight. And um, since then we already that um, military is extending its power. Um, now we can see that the coup is so obvious that they want the power, they want total power of that. So, and they neglect the rest, result of 2020 election and destroy all the democratic institutions. So after the coup, I am um, I'm a strike um, strike coordinator, and um, I since from February I, I was on the road the whole month uh, with all the all the younger generation Z on the road and showing our demand that uh, we are not we are against the coup and we want democracy. Um, uh, let me share my presentation. So. Um, that uh, I would like to catch up on what had happened since from uh, February in Myanmar. I think we need to make her co-host too. Um, no, I think I can share with our co-hosts. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so this is uh, the, the symbol of three finger salutes are fighting for democracy and civil disobedience movement. Um, it starts from February, we are on the road the whole month and it start, uh, the CDM movement is start from uh, a different level of employee, teachers, counters, and, and they are not going and they are not taking any duty of them. So, uh, they, they are taking the lead and they, they are taking the initiative like uh, they, they will not walk under the, under the hunter. Um, so everyone is on the street and showing their demand that they are uh, the democracy. So not only young people, not only staff, but also everyone of the country is uh, uh, involving in that process. Like uh, for example, 8 p.m. we have been in ports so that noise means in our culture is that if there is an evil, you have to move with that evil by beating things and spending spend thoughts. Um, so in, even day is not enough and we do night protest too, to against the hunter and like in, this is like not in the, not in the big city, but also in the rural and every street of the country happen, happened in February. Uh, start from March is nightmare become and night arrest is starting and uh, police are beating and uh, searching for the protesters to arrest and that kind of brutal action is action wars happened and uh, but people are not still not giving up um, like um, and especially generation they, they, they have different idea and different innovation you know like um, uh, this is like a uh, general leader of my online and uh, like they are, they will not, the soldier and police, they will not step on their, they will not step on their leader. So they make a stickers and put it on the street so that police will not cross that line. Um, and uh, like are there like religious leaders also involved? Well, we cannot forget them. They, uh, they are also like, you know, or protect, protecting uh, with their own effort. Um, and in the march, uh, there is brutal crackdown and uh, also people being arrested. Um, it's very difficult to go out on the street for the protest. Um, but people use uh, their innovative 
delivery and uh, sh uh, showing their demand too. In this picture, this is a doll uh, called Kitang Tang in Myanmar. It's like, even though you showed that doll, uh, the doll was 10 again. So it means that it's uh, giving the message to the young people in all the country that uh, we will stand again, even though we, uh, even though we had difficulties. <laughs> and of course, there are demand to release our leaders of Aung San in different way. People, people are protesting with their different. And since March, um, the military should to head to the protesters and. Even in one day in Yangon, 72 people being shot in that. So for that memorial, um, the young people should uh, the protest, soul protest be created. Um, of course, we had larger support from our neighbors like um, Japan, Korea, and uh, in Asia, like Miti Alliance, Hong Kong, and Thailand that encourage us more like a mental view. Know, when the coup is longer, like more than two or three months, then you may be depressed and you may uh, feel hopeless. And at the time, like in our neighbor's country is giving message that uh, don't give up. And like, you know, it's it's a really meaningful to me and to, to the protest with you. And also we, we share our, our back and forth message to like, um, and it's really helpful that the Alliance is organizing on, on ground protests and online protests to, to show the solidarity with us. Um, in April, is a serious crackdown and people being killed. Um, so that um, Generation Z start thinking about how to defend themselves with their own way and it's uh, how to use Molotov and how to defend uh, police and soldier. They start thinking and they start uh, innovating some some defense tools and 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 making making cross the line. Um, so um, <laughs> I will stop that of what uh, the protest there and where are we now? And we have other political mechanism is going on. Uh, we had 2020 election last year and uh, we had a um, member of parliament from that election. So that member of parliament created a group uh, called CRPH committee representing Hidong Sun and um, uh, Myanmar is a really diverse background of ethnics and religious and other different groups. So we had a national unity consultative council um, uh, to solve uh, well, to solve the political problem and announce a federal charter how we will go forward uh, uh, Myanmar future. And uh, we had um, a government, uh, national unity government. And uh, last month we had we we formed people to fend forces with uh, uh, younger generations and other other ethnic groups. So now today is today marks 135 days of the coup. So more than 800 people being killed and 6,000 more than 6,000 being arrested and still the, the, the number is ongoing. And like um, the number is increasing day by day. So um, the protester, protester being arrested and um, to announce this week, like a strike, it's happening to the ethnic area by Malishi Pointer, and uh, people have to flee to the jungle to stay uh, away from Thailand. And and this season in Myanmar is rainy season. It's heavy rain going on, and um, you know they, they they are they are wet and they are in the jungle without food and without shelter. And just a reason yesterday, they burned down uh, some villages. And, and so that um, millions of uh, IDPs across the border and inside of some state were going on. Um, this is what um, uh, ladies and her kids have to stay in the jungle uh, these days. So well, what is the role of Generation Z in this uh, civil disobedience movement? Uh, so they lead the general strike and they are big organized and they, they 
organize generous right around the country. And the, the initiate the idea of the mining federal democracy. Um, because um, just democracy is not enough for Myanmar because of diverse ethnic group. Uh, so we ask for the demand for the federal democracy to involve all the other regions and ethnic groups also involved in that movement. And also they, they innovate their self-defense system to, to protect their own township so that they can protect their family members and their friends not to arrest at midnight. And also they criticize social norms and patriarchy. Like in, in, in February, we had a protest call is uh, women wearing longji, for example, in Myanmar women's card. So women's cards, uh, they are using flag uh, for women's cards. It means that uh, younger generation uh, is setting every, uh, you know, every social status, every identity and LGBTIQs and role of women. And of course, generations we stand with the minority group for Ranger who have been oppressed a long time ago. So even when they use the slogan when they are protesting, they stand with Rohingya. And now that the, this is in Myanmar, this, this is the university a time to attend the university. The Hunter is opening the university, but nobody is going to, to the university. Uh, they are boycotting education system under the Hunter. Um, and, and generations we are joining people different forces to fight back against the hunter. And like um, uh, not only Generation Z, but also Generation Y and X, they are also involving. And so it, um, we, we see that uh, if Generation Z is leading a friend and Generation Y is supporting and taking the role of networking, and Generation X is um, uh, protecting and supporting Juan and others, uh, other support, uh, medical supports. And so that um, now it's like uh, Hunter is not success, the process of the coup yet, because uh, they, own, they only own two television channels that they can propaganda. They didn't get anything from us. By them, they didn't get the power from people yet, and they cannot run any administration or any office because staff are not going to the to to you know uh, to the office, and like doctors are not going to the hospital, and teachers are not going to the school to teach, and students are not attending the university, um, and especially like uh, other sector. Uh, other sector like private sector, like banking system is collapsing and bank uh, worker also joining senior movement. So we could see that the coal is not still not successful yet. And um, I would like to bring up uh, the, the voice of Generation Z on peace and justice. They said um, they voted for 2020 election with their little finger. Um, uh, and uh, they they use three fingers salute, uh, you know, to show uh, to show that uh, they are demands and they, they want democracy. And um, they are ready to use those fingers uh, to fight back against the military. So that that is uh, their demand and they are uh, they are determined and they are strong. Uh, strong vision of that. Um, so in last but not least, uh, I will say that um, people being very patient, you know, um, uh, to want democracy. And um, they still like more than 135 days, they are still uh, uh, accusing the coup in different way, different uh, strategy, they are still uh, determined that they, they are not giving up. And uh, we will say that uh, this is the last time for the hunter to uh, to give up because at last we had a coup three times in 1968, 1962, 1988 and 2007 re uh, revolution. So uh, this time is the end of the hunter. Um, uh, that's, that's the voice from Generation C of Myanmar. And the last thing is that 
uh, we believe that uh, there uh, uh, will be no peace without uh, peace and justice without democracy. So it's really important and thank you for your solidarity and support. And it's still needed to support and your solidarity to bring back peace, justice and democracy in Myanmar. Because Myanmar is a part of the world and Myanmar democracy is world democracy too. So thank you. Thank you, thank you again very much for your presentation and to present uh, how diverse is the fight for democracy in Myanmar. And also for providing information about how urgent it is for everyone to support people in Myanmar. And now uh, we are going with our final speaker. speaker Nusaria Nugama. Nusaria Nugamuna san desu. He's a member of the Social Human Rights Group. Shakai Jinkei Ho Fukyu Group. No. Publicized group uh, from Thailand. So. Thai no Katsudoka desu. Nusaria, the floor is yours. Hello everyone. Uh, hello again. And uh, first of all, I I really uh, to be honored as a, a speaker and in Asian generation that voice for peace and justice. And oh, okay, I'm gonna share my screen. Okay, uh, first of all, uh, my name is Peggy Sanya. I just graduated from Kangen University uh, Faculty of Law. I do a, a political activity since I am freshman in Daudin group. It's about uh, against, uh, against the project of uh, political the government, like their effect the people in our country mostly are doing in the parts of northeast of Thailand. Okay, uh, Thailand has been emanated by the military government for seven years, and there are many movements that moving against the the government. But there is a group that not under the the umbrella like. Uh, like a small part and doing doing in a, a province or the district, but not a big movement. But uh, in like I use I will let you see the information in um map data in Thailand. Mob data is a uh, is a data of doing the protester like one or two years past. How how I can do that? Okay, one or two years past, there are uh, many movement in young activists protesting with dictatorship government in many country. Okay, I I I gonna. Let you see, I there are small group, but not a big big under umbrella. But I think the generation can adapt by using to have more raising their voice with the generation idea to being a, a under the umbrella. It 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 is in the situation of Thailand. Okay. One or two years past, there are many movements of young activists protesting of dictatorship government in many countries. Similarly, the young movement with the same political struggle. Generation said, which is the people who use many online platform, many people use it and they can bring the benefit of the digital. To, to, 
more than the other. Yeah. Uh, they can, and young people searching and in a platform entertainment, like watching series, there no boundary. So uh, young people can use social movement, so, social to moving against the government for, for uh, by many lessons in worldwide. They are searching a tactic all the time that you see in uh, Hong Kong, Myanmar, or Thailand, they are exchange the information all the time. So uh, in Thailand, I think that the generation that have uh, something different with other generation. And I will separate the generation into B3 generation. It is a picture of uh, moving last year. Uh, first is boomer, boomer's generation. Uh, for Thai boomer, they grow up in a good academy, uh, e economy. They have a privilege to have a job and success in life. So uh, uh, reforming or revolution is not much important for them. So they're afraid to change and afraid to lose their privilege. So they can see a good point for a reform a country. Thailand have uh, plan for 20 years of the military government for developed country to be a spatial economic zone and industrial estate that more effect and make people be suffer because they don't have a land to make a, a agriculture or having their home. So they are, they are suffer for that, but the boomer in Thailand that 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 they don't see this point and they have a privilege to because in that time they have a good good economy and they have a land or their job uh, before. Okay, in the next generation is generation X and Y. They they grow up in a bubble economy and they have a many job to support and they will unemployed in that time is it in between generation of baby boomer and generation set so they have a question of the political structure because they they have a son the son of the generation they have a child and Generation X and Y is our, our parents. So there are conflicts with baby boomer because uh, baby boomer is their parent, the parent of X and Y. And they are so conflict, but they have to raise the child is going who which is going in generation set. They, they so they they gonna have a question and conflict in their mind. So they, they, they learn to, to uh, support that generation set, but sometimes uh, sometime generation set parents in Thailand, they conflict with X and Y in between generation two. But uh, I think this generation in between generation has, has a big mass people and if generation Z can do generation X and Y support them all the time, the movement is gonna be bigger and bigger. It, it may be the requirement has been successful more than now. Okay. Uh, for generation Z part, I think th this generation is believing in a thing that can change, that they believe in changing and uh, the, and they use a number, having a, a so much space in digital and number of digital user is a real person. So they think 
to change something in digital, it can be happen. Uh, democracy is a real to that we can make we our life better. So we don't respect to the hero or we independence in the movement. It it is uh the spatial mark what what generations are different from the other from the other generation. So I I mark I mark uh, how different of of a uh, generation Z and between uh, boomers and generation in between generation. It is uh, in the requirement of moving. Uh, they they use the issue based requirements like LGBT. Uh, uh, Dressing in school, teacher doing bad thing to student is is relation and is close to their self is not is a not high from a uh, social structure like uh democracy is we we are we are want to democracy too but now movement is the in issue based. It is can be have uh, can be support people to have a power and see their fame more. Uh, okay, second, they take care for mass mass protester like there's no pattern, but they try to avoiding to hit with uh, the force of the military, the police. The security of it that we 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 can we can protect each other and we changing about uh how to supporting the mass people like how to manage with tear gas and water gun or drone with other country like in multi alliance by Hong Kong or Myanmar and we learn how to change and adapting. So uh, now in Thailand the situation have uh, three requirements but we can protesting on the road because we are suffer from coronavirus. So uh, from uh, the generation idea I we in Thailand, in my my part of group, trying to do a uh, a group umbrella like re region in the northeast of Thailand, COVID more generation or of the generation and bring the power of each each generation to be alliance. Uh, its name Kong Chi Moon is a new umbrella group. It's a many part of people, not only youth generation such as a uh, red shirt movement in Thailand and specialist professor young generation as dates reporters small small seller like SME non government non benefit ah, non government NGO is NGO we are expect that uh, northeast of Thailand regions will have a strong one requirement from the base problem of of our regions like we are suffer from spatial economic zone or industrial estate. Okay, and uh, we can bring ha we, we can bring a generation or the generation have a life better. So is it during the bookcase and and I think generate they in in the past of the group we 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 think that uh generation set is the main power to run and give their supporting with our uh other generation. So okay, I'm very excited, but 
I hope you will get something and I I see I saw many power of the generation so uh may may the first be with you thank you Thank you very much Masa, for your presentation. It was really great to present how important is the role of Generation Z to address domestic change and how uh, each movement can reinforce each other. So as the presentations were pretty great and interesting, we wouldn't have long time for questions and answer, but we, I know we have some more, some questions on the chat. So I'm gonna read the first one and then if someone wants to present another question, you can raise your hand after this one. So the first question is for Kim. And someone asked if you could please tell everyone why you don't give up and why you keep doing your actions in spite of the threat to your life. Kim, the floor is yours to answer this question. Hello, never sorry. I I was and um, mute. So um, because we are we are very determined to go forward uh, to against the hundreds that we had experienced. Like for example, our older generation, our parents in 1988 uprising, that the same things happened and that is happening currently. So we had a kind of uh, uh, story from childhood that how, how terrified the situation was. Now this time we are facing our own, you know. And it's, it's, really, um, it's really difficult to, to face and to stay without freedom and without justice. Um, it's we 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 had a saying that uh, we we will die uh, if we have to live under the hunter. So we are really determined that we will not stay under the hunter, and we will fight back, or we will find a way to 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 against the hunter and to bring back democracy. So we had uh, many uh, that kind of trauma that experience how military is. Uh, using its power and and virtually kill to its own people and how unprofessional mm -hmm. is it? Uh, so this time we we decided to kick out uh, kick out the military from 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 the political power. Uh, so yeah, that determined us to go forward. And um, I think another is that uh, uh, sure, sure, we have Riggs and we have Triton and like for me, I have to move it, I have to move around the place to place uh, uh, because of security and and like uh, I have to follow many security protocol like digital security and uh, physical security like other friends too and. And now the military is using intelligence in a, a CCTV device from exported from China, like uh, like 360 CCTVs are in the tongue. So we have to be very careful, and uh, we have to aware of uh, you know if we bring out, and we have to check their information and need to follow security protocol, and that is really tough, um, and and. Um, we believe that not to arrest, not not to be arrested in this time is is another revolution for for the protester and organizer. Thank you. Thank you very much for your answer, Kim. Uh, we have just time for one question or comment. Sorry for that, but yeah, the presentations were great. So if someone has other question, there is the time to ask. There was uh, one other question that was asked a little bit earlier in the chat. I uh, took it down. So it says, it's from uh, Kasuma. 
I heard that 10 to 20% of students in universities are intimidated and threatened as non-civil disobedience movement when they try to take classes. This is the same as in the US until recently, and it leads to the division of those who oppose the National Army. What does the NUG think about this? Most of the people are calling for the release of Dor Aung San Suu Kyi. Uh, so I guess that's another one for you, Kin. Uh, uh, could you please rephrase again? Sorry, I didn't catch your advice um, sure. a bit. Um, so basically they're asking um, the, the fissures that are occurring in the Takmador um, because um, some of the uh, soldiers in the military disagree with the coup. Um, how is this affecting the the army and what does the NUC think about these fissures that are occurring? Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, there is some CDM from soldier to like 800, uh, more than 800 joined CDM too. But in terms of, um, uh, we have uh, uh, maybe 5 million soldiers, so it's, it's still a small amount to divide inside of the military. So, uh, and, um, and, and UGs are using other strategy to persuade soldiers to join CDM like the form of people defense forces and young people are joining and like they open the channel if uh, if a uh, soldier and police want to join cdm they uh, mm -hmm. they they have a collaboration with ethnic armed groups to to join to them so um, that is still going on but uh, we hope uh, more, more more and more uh, soldier and, and police are joining uh, but uh, in, on ground, like township and administrative, uh, the system is collapsing because administrator being boycotted from the people. Like if you were doing administrator in the township, then all the, the whole townships uh, will do social punishments. Um, so that kind of social punishment is very strong too. So. Oh, through your question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kim. And I think Akiko wants to say something and we'll close with Akiko, the question and answer section. Akiko, the floor is yours. Uh, Akiko, are you there? You have your hand raised, or was that oh. an accident? Hi. Hi. Sumimasen, <laughs> iですか? Hi. Anone, eto, watashi wa, ano, gin wo. I have a question. I want to make a report about the parliamentary watch project. In Japan, university students are asking the parliamentarians what they think about the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons. And they announce that about 13 to 23, 13 to 19% of the parliamentarians support the TPNW. And toward the next general elections, University students are active in making the government which will support the TPNW. Yesterday we had the webinar on this. So they, they urge people to go to the polling stations and showing the big arrow showing that the polling station is there. So that's what they are planning to do. So the young people in Japan are also taking actions on the streets. I just wanted to report to you that. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for informing that. I don't know if the speakers want to react to this or say something before we move on. Uh, 
I think, um, honestly, I could talk about this all day. There's so many questions that I have for all of the speakers, but we are running a little bit over time. Um, so we should probably move to the next part. Uh, just so. Okay, perfect. So yeah, I guess if you have some questions, you can use the chat box and the speakers will contact you later to answer your questions. So now for the closing remarks, I'm pleased to present Galileo de Guzman, the program officer at Focus on the Global South. Galileo, the floor is yours. Hello. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, perfect. Okay, thank you. Um, konnichiwa, minasan. Ano ha sayo? Mingalaba kimba? Sawadigap. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all, wherever you are. Um, my name is Galileo, and I am from Focus on the Global South. We are a collective of committed activists that combines research and analysis, popular education, and strong collaborations with grassroots organizations and social movements to build common positions and collective actions. It is my great honor and privilege to learn from the GEN, or the roots, and the diverse experiences of youth activists in the shared space of Asian youth and youth at heart. Um, thank you to International Peace Bureau and the other co-organizers for the invitation and opportunity to contribute my bit. Um, hearing the discussions and plethora of perspectives shared by our young speakers, it is clear that the common thread that binds together our individual, communal, and universal experiences is our common desire and struggle for peace and justice. However, it is important to highlight the distinct experiences of each group. And in this regard, the Gen Cs, or loosely those born between 1997 and 2012. In four years time, they will comprise a quarter of the total population of the Asia Pacific region, the same share as the Gen Y or millennials the preceding generation, which I belong to. We have learned in this shared space the diverse involvement and in initiatives of youth in activism, from the push for nuclear abolition, opposition to wars of aggression, and overcoming capitalism towards scientific socialism in Japan, as shared by Nakayama Ayumi-san, to the candlelight demonstrations in South Korea and Park do hyuns sharing of the silent march and Lenin walls at this place of pan-Asian solidarity for democracy. From the umbrella revolution in Hong Kong, pro-democracy protests in Thailand, and the symbolism of the three-finger salute against dictatorship as shared by Kun Wisalia Ngamna. And to Kim Sandar sharing of Burma civil disobedience movement against the military coup and junta. We have also seen the intersections and connections linking peoples, communities, and struggles beyond boundaries. The political activism of Gen Cs, complemented by their exposure to information and communication technologies in their upbringing and their embrace of the digital era, notwithstanding the misgivings some may have about digitalization and the inequity and insecurity that it spawns. The younger generation's rejection of political vanguards and penchant for leaderless movements, as we have seen in the Milti Alliance, the challenge traditional structures and ways of working, and the youth's creative expressions of cultures of solidarity and resistance, both in the online and offline world. Similarly, we have also seen the unprecedented challenges faced by the youth across the world. And there is no question that children and the youth are the ones who suffer the most in times of conflict and unpeace in an unjust world. In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, they find themselves barely keeping their heads above the confluence of uncertainties and insecurities in the wreckage of a war-torn and climate-ravaged planet. Young people have been affected in many dimensions of their lives, physically, mentally, emotionally, and even financially, as Nakayama-san mentioned earlier. Minors are barred from going out of their homes following strict quarantine protocols. Students are forced to adapt to an education that has shifted to online mode and distance learning. Fresh graduates are entering a job market with re record-breaking levels of economic recession, under an unemployment, and enormous uncertainties. 
But one particular trait of the Gen Cs or Zoomers that I want to underscore in these closing remarks is that most of them are coming of age and entering into adulthood in a fast and ever-changing world disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic. At the same time, I want to challenge the unfair responsibility that is being forced upon the youth with the messianic expectations of many that the youth are here, that the youth are here to correct the mistakes of the previous generations. A popular saying in the Philippines, my home country goes, ang kabataan ang pag-asa ng bayan, or loosely translated to be, the youth are our hope for the future. While at first glance, it evokes feelings of trust and confidence on the youth, there is also the danger of placing an unnecessary burden upon their shoulders, seeing them as heroes who are here to save the world. And we explicitly see this in the lead up to the general elections next year in, in the Philippines and the importance placed in the youth vote that would constitute one third of the voting population. Ironically, as also the previous speakers have mentioned, the Gen Z's are also often branded as apathetic to political and social issues, uncritical and susceptible to disinformation given their exposure to social media. There is also the notion that the youth are mere passive inheritors of the future, whatever that future may be, forever disempowered from confronting the unpeace and injustice of the prevailing world order. But as we have witnessed and continually see in the region and across the globe, the fact is that the youth are standing up. They are resisting against neoliberal and authoritarian regimes and building alternatives for systemic change. They are actively reclaiming their stake in society and the future through climate strikes, peace marches, grassroots protests, and transnational solidarity initiatives. Just before this webinar, I was in a political education session with youth leaders who are doing the thankless yet extremely necessary work of community organizing amidst the COVID-19 pandemic at that. As we reach the conclusion of this shared space, we see very clearly the dynamism of the youth who cut across sectors, groups, and peoples. They are indubitably a source of new energies, new ideas, and new ways of reimagining the world. They play a vital role in the regeneration of people's movements and the recovery efforts towards a new world post-COVID-19, a world that is more just, more peaceful, more sustainable. But it must also be emphasized that intergenerational justice calls for intergenerational accountability, that just and lasting peace entails learning from each other's histories and realities. Hence, the importance of strengthening the intergenerational links among peoples across generations. Let me end by going back to what Jun Q. Lee mentioned at the beginning of this webinar, that it is the time to listen to the youth. Many times the youth are asked to contribute their ideas. Many times the youth are asked to voice out their opinions about the world. Many times the youth are asked to share their dreams for the future. We have done so and we will continue to do so. But we ask each of you to not only listen, instead take action together with us for all our collective future and the future generations. On that note, I extend my warmest solidarity greetings to all. And as we say it in the Philippines, padayon, padayon. Thank you, Galileo, for your final remarks. They are very important because they constitute a call to action for everyone to support youth movements that fight uh, for democracy and for human rights in general. And now we want to take this space uh, to present a really amazing initiative for the International Peace Bureau. Now I will give the floor to Sean Conner, the International Coordinator for the World Peace Congress 2021. Sean, the floor is yours. Great, thank you. And thank you to uh, Galileo who has already uh, said most of our, our Congress themes uh, within his closing speech, which was a, a really inspirational speech. So thank you very much for that. Uh, also makes my job a little bit easier. Uh, the World Peace Congress to be held in Barcelona this October 15th to 17th has the theme of reimagine our world and taking action for justice and peace, uh, which were themes throughout today's uh, discussion. 
uh, which I find really great. Uh, we will now share the Congress video so you can get a little bit of the taste. It has the voice of uh, Noam Chomsky leading it. Uh, and that is just a couple minutes. And then afterwards, there's one more initiative we would like to share with you to gather some further attention. Uh, so without any further ado, just in case Stephanie's got it up further. Every problem we face has a feasible solution. There's a feasible solution to the pandemic. How do we know that? Because many countries are implementing. What about heating the environment? Yes, there are feasible measures essentially meet the IPC standards, give us a fair chance of a solving the problem, even a better existence. Nuclear weapons, obviously, we know how to deal with them, get rid of them. Go case by case, there's almost nothing that we don't have a way to deal with. What's missing? The will and the commitment. Now, is organized human society capable of getting to that point? Your speculation's as good as mine. The only thing we can do is hope that it's true, put all our efforts and energy into trying to make it become true. There's no alternative. So the Congress really is an event where we hope to bring together uh, movements, social movements from all around the world, not just limited to organizations focused on peace alone, um, but also working on the environment, on uh, gender issues, on uh, trade union and human rights, uh, and plenty more. So really, uh, everyone is invited to join us uh, for the Congress. We will have both in-person and virtual participation options. It will be a hybrid event. So those who cannot come to uh, Barcelona will still be able to participate. Further details on the Congress and everything related to it are available on the website, the Congress website, which I'll just post into the chat here real quick. Sorry, I just did it so Sorry. Okay. Yeah, so it's already there. Wonderful. Um, and we would also like to quickly take this opportunity. I know we're just about out of time to share one further video. We're launching another campaign today related to the Congress uh, that specifically uh, we're trying to raise some money to allow for the younger generation, Generation Z, and uh, also a few that are falling into the, the millennial or Generation Y uh, to participate in the Congress in person. Uh, so we're trying to support them with travel and accommodation costs and would appreciate any uh, financial support that you'll be able to give for that. Uh, so uh, Stephanie, do you have that video up or uh, should I? We need your help. Your donation is a donation for peace, is a donation for a come together, a donation for our fight for Barcelona. Hi, I'm Emma. I'm a peace activist from the UK and I've been working with the International Peace Bureau and the International Peace Bureau Youth Network. I'm Tasha Smith Berrigino, peace advocate involved in promoting children and youth empowerment through advocacy and capacity building activities in Liberia. Hello, my name is Maria Teresa Barrios from Argentina. 
and I consider myself a peace worker since I am fully dedicated to peace. Hi, I'm Srishti. I am from India. I am the youth leader of Indian Institute for Peace, Disarmament and Environment Protection. My name is Barista Namde Benjamin Iguanus. Be a part of our movement. Don't forget to donate. Yep, there is a longer version of that video where you can learn a little bit more about each of our five chosen um, participants and why we feel that they uh, should join us in Barcelona for the event. Uh, for any additional questions, I think Mark has shared all of our social media links. Uh, feel free to reach out to us and we're happy to uh, answer any questions, provide any information related to the Congress or to the crowdfunding, as you see. Thank you very much. Uh, back to you, Stephanie. Thanks, Sean. Sorry. Uh, thanks, Sean, for doing that. Um, Sean, if you also happen to have a link to the crowdfunding page, if you could post that. Um, in the chat. I don't have one handy. Yep, I um, already posted it once, but I'll post it again uh, okay. just to reinforce it. Perfect. Um, so I'm actually just going to hand back to Jessica um, to just do the final closure for the session today. Yeah, thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, all the speakers, for their inspirational and really fantastic presentations. And we would also like to thank all the attendees, all the participants to this event to contribute with your comments and your assistance. So thank you very much. Thank you for staying. And hopefully we see, we see you all again on our next webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.